I have a cousin, and for tonight, we're going to call her Lauren. We like to send each other the goofiest, ugliest pictures that we can possibly create. But instead of using Snapchat, where the pictures delete, we intentionally use iMessage so that they're saved. We've been doing it for about a year and a half now, and there are over 2,000 in my camera roll. I look forward to it every day, and it always makes me smile. One of the many things we share is our mutually awkward and difficult relationship with our grandfather. He is a lot to handle. When our family gets together, we endure him and his often absurd comments about us by cranking up Usher in the kitchen for late night dancing, watching Pitch Perfect, and learning how to play Mahjong. Although she is six years older than I am, Lauren is the sister that I never had. She is the person that I admire and aspire to be like more than absolutely anyone. From her heartwarming smile, to her love of the little things, to her humor, her work ethic, her strength, her fashion sense. I adore everything about her. What I didn't know was that when she was a freshman, she needed to seek serious medical help because of her extreme social anxiety. We are often taught to push the negative feelings down and disregard that gut feeling when something is really, really wrong. This can keep us from forming stable relationships, it perpetuates abuse, and leaves us feeling extremely isolated. The dissociation that comes from the denial of honest feelings is driven by Western media and our cultural norm of pretending that everything is just okay, when really it's not. Humans crave approval and the validation from their peers. We always want to swing public opinion in our favor. Alain de Botton writes in his book, Status Anxiety, about the human tendency to base our self-esteem on the opinions of others, the opinions that others have of us. He argues that our self-worth is dependent on the love and adoration we receive from those around us, even those who we know deep down have characters who are severely flawed. In March of my freshman year, I retreated into myself. I had dedicated so much time and energy to the outside world, to my friends, sports, family, travel, school, etc. You name it. It was a relief to turn, my to turn my focus inside to my thoughts, my feelings about what was going on, and the way that I perceived myself. With all this self-reflection came an unhealthy hyper-insecurity about everyone's opinions of me. So, small doses of this kind of focus can be helpful. In these moments of solitude, the bigger questions about my life, its merit, and purpose came up. However, that's not the direction that my thoughts completely went. By the time I had gotten back to school, I was feeling a lot of constriction in my chest, and it was hard for me to breathe. My jaw would shake and my hands would tremor whenever I would interact with others. This had happened before, but in much less noticeable ways. But now, it had grown to an extremely extremely uncomfortable level. I was worried that absolutely everyone around me could see this change happening. It may not be obvious, but I'm an introvert, and I'm genuinely scared of talking to other people. I'm so socially anxious that I often cannot bear the thought of coming to school and having in to interact with my peers and my teachers. When, I, when I'm having a conversation with you, I'll track the amount of times that I make eye contact. I'm overly conscious of how close I'm standing to you, where I put my hands, what my legs are doing, if my hair is in my face, if I'm biting the inside of my mouth, if I'm talking about myself more than I should, if I'm showing you that I'm listening, if I'm listening enough. I am listening to what you're saying, but I'm so self-conscious about how I act that I get lost in my own head. I walk around, and I feel like everybody's looking at me with judgment. I'm anxious that I'm doing something that deserves disapproval. I'm so in my head that when walking to class, I often wonder if I pass anybody on the way there. I've been told that whatever, whatever anxiety and stress I'm feeling does not appear on my face or come through with my social interactions. This is because I put such, such immense effort into pushing my anxious feelings down. I'm nervous that they will affect my ability to handle my responsibilities and get through my day. But I'm learning that this has a huge negative impact on my emotional wellness. 
I actually didn't know what was causing these feelings until I came up in conversation with Lauren. Because her story began when I was so young, I had not known the extent to which she had gone through in regards to self-inflicted pain and to which I could relate. I found solace in her. She helped me pull what triggered my anxiety out into the light and ask myself why I had these feelings. She helped me look at this ball of unhappiness inside me so I could begin to untangle it. Lauren calmed me down just by sharing her story, making me not feel alone. She shared the strategy she used to move away from needing a positive opinion from others, to be self-confident, really emphasizing the difference between a superiority complex and just knowing your self-worth. To look at her, self, with her own eyes, instead of the eyes of others, but also rely on people she undoubtedly knew had her best interests at heart. She told me to start by doing the little things for myself that would spike my emotional wellness. From early morning walks, to tea before bed, to journaling, to eating watermelon because it makes me happy. I am learning about the importance of surrounding yourself, myself, with people that make me smile and laugh, but more importantly, those that will be there for me when I feel like I cannot go on. Lauren showed me that the people who look at you and try to take you down need more love than ever. And to give them that love genuinely and wholeheartedly because they are so insecure and so hurting. Because of all my serious conversations with Lauren about my social anxiety, I'm learning to look at life from the perspective of last half full. Maintaining this dichotomy that it's really important to feel your feelings. But there's always, always something to be grateful for. Over time, I have incorporated her strategies into my life, and I've seen a huge difference. I have begun to prioritize myself and my emotional wellness. I'm learning how to acknowledge how I'm feeling and to be okay with it. Once you acknowledge the feeling's existence and look at it, with a critical eye, you will then be able to find manners in which to tackle them. Otherwise, you will continue to dissociate and never pinpoint what is making you truly unhappy. We all deal with issues that threaten our emotional wellness. We all deal with it. What helped me was to, help, was to find someone who shared a similar experience, someone whom I loved and who I trusted. Finding someone to tell and to begin to unpack that pit in your stomach is a brilliant first step in releasing yourself from the anxiety, sadness, or discomfort that you feel. I am still working on this, and it is not easy for me. I'm actively trying to employ these strategies that Lauren has given me, and I hope that over time, it will lessen my anxiety in social situations. My emotional wellness is dependent upon me doing this work with myself. And had I never taken this honest internal look I would have continued to just shove the anxious feelings down, afraid to pull them out into the light. It is okay to be scared, because vulnerability and acknowledging you're not okay is difficult. It is so incredibly important to admit the way you're feeling and take time to look at those feelings inquisitively. Find that person whom you share fears with. Surround yourself with people who lessen the sadness that brews within you. Learn how to take a deep breath, bite the bullet that is social criticism, and put your emotional health first. Don't let the opinion of others hinder you from finding happiness. The judgment and opinion of others bears absolutely no weight compared to the dark emotional sandpit that you can progressively sink into if you deny the feeling that something is wrong. I have been there. Reflect on your internal thoughts and allow yourself to feel the scary feelings inside you. Take the solitude. Find someone with whom you feel safe or can rant to, but don't let the feelings eat away at you out of fear for being regarded as some sort of social pariah. Put your emotional wellness first. That is what Lauren has and continue to teach us need to do. I've learned from experience, and I'm sharing this with you not only so you understand me more as a human being, but to explain how vital your emotional wellness is. It, res it rests on this precise balance. And if that balance is off, it can rupture the stability of your life. I can now look at my anxiety from an outside perspective and proudly say that I can handle it. I can handle the disapproval. 
I can handle the attempts at making me break. I can handle the judgment. I can handle being alone. All because I began by taking this deep breath, confiding in my cousin who mitigated my fears, and pulling my extreme social anxiety out into the light. I'm right there with you in your struggle against whatever is making you feel anxious or sad or even unworthy. We are all contending with it. Some are just better at hiding it than others. Tread lightly in your judgment or persecution of someone else. You truly have no idea what's going on inside their head. Thank you. Thank you.